Hello everyone. If you are even slightly curious about how chips are designed, or you have heard about companies like AMD, Intel, Nvidia, Qualcomm, and you are wondering how to get into that world, this video is exactly for you. Today I am going to break down VLSI industry and all the roles, the skills you need, and exactly what you should do step by step. Whether you are a college student or a working professional trying to switch, this video is for you. Let's start with the basics of VLSI industry. What VLSI stands for? VLSI is, stands for very large scale integration. No, uh, it's it's about designing chips with billions of transistors, like the brains of every smartphone, laptop, smartwatch, or even electric car. This industry is where hardware meets software. Engineers write code to describe hardware behavior, simulate it, optimize it, and finally send it to fabrication. And trust me, it's not just cool and it's powerful also. The world runs on chips and people who build them are in huge demand. Career paths in VLSI. There are multiple career paths in VLSI. Uh, like front end roles, back end roles and other roles like analog design engineer, validation engineer, EDA tool development engineer and application engineer. For front end, you'll become an ASIC design engineer or ASIC verification engineer. So being a uh, design engineer, you have to design RTL which happens in system Verilog or Verilog. And uh, in verification, you have to verify that RTL using UVM. Uh, you have to verify that design works logically or not. For backend role, you take that design, implement it physically, and you have to think of timing, placements, and routing, and power optimization. Uh, for analog design, yes, everything is not digital. For analog design, you have to design the analog circuitry. For validation, being a validation engineer, you have to validate the chip in the lab. Being an EDA tool development or tool developer, you have to develop tools that will be useful for design engineers, verification engineers, analog design engineers, etc. And now let's discuss the front end roles. Being a front end uh, RTL design engineer or verification engineer, you have to design a logic using hardware descriptive language, which, which is very log system very log, uh, and you have to verify that RTL design in UVM or using SVA. So if you enjoy writing code and debugging logic. This is your space. You'll use tools like Synopsys VCS, Cadence Helium, simulators to test what you have written. So now come to backend roles. Backend roles are more like construction. You have to, you have got the design now. Now you have to build it physically. So the roles include synthesis, placement and routing, static timing analysis, physical verification. So in in synthesis, you you turn RTL into gates. A placement and routing means laying out those gates on silicon. Static timing analysis means making sure uh, your signals arrive on time. Physical verification ensuring chip passes, the layout verifications, etc. If you are detail oriented and like working with timing, floor plans, and real hardware constraints, backend is an awesome fit for you. Other roles like analog, signal, and mix design or analog and mixed signal design we can say you have to work on PLLs analog to digital converters and SERDIS these things interact on a physical level or a real world for post silicon validation you test real silicon in the lab debugging with the scopes oscilloscope like oscilloscope and logic analyzers EDA tool development you build tools that other use like synthesis tools, simulators, layout editors etc for being an application engineer, you act as a bridge between companies and tool vendors, helping to solve them real design and challenges. Each of the roles require deep knowledge and is very rewarding. Here are some skills that you need to focus. So first of all, let's see some concepts that we need to uh, understand. So digital electronics, CMOS, computer architecture. For digital electronics, uh, you need to focus on logic gates, FSMs, and data paths. For CMOS, you have to have basic of transistor operation, noise margining. And for computer architecture, you need to under have the understanding of pipelining, cache memories, and memory system. There are multiple languages and tools that you need to focus on. Yeah. As we are talking about languages, you need to understand Verilog, System Verilog, and UVM for verification, if you want to be a verification engineer. And you have to know some basic tools, EDA tools like uh, Synopsys, Cadence, Mentor Simulators like VCS, uh, Questa, Zillium. The more hands-on you are, the better. You have to know, you also have to know about scripting in Python, uh, Bash and Tickle. Roadmap for students. Uh, you, If you are in college, you need to focus on some core subjects like Digital Design or CMOS. You also have to learn Verilog and System Verilog and practice writing test benches. You, you can practice those on uh, EDA Playground or Vivado. These are some open source 
tools you uh, you can try to get internships uh, even unpaid internship will also help try just try to get into some company and uh, understand how the flow works publish your work on github or linkedin you recruiters love the self initiated projects if you are working in it or another field and you want to switch it's totally possible what you have to do you have to take a focused online course of uh, maven silicon or vsd chip edge where you can understand the concepts of uh, this rtl design rtl verif if you want to go there uh, build your portfolio with at least one rtl plus verification project learn linux scripting and basic tool flow basic most of the work uh, work is done on linux uh, so net you also have to network on linkedin vlsi hiring often op, often happens on a referral basis so uh, you have to be active on linkedin now let's talk about the most important step getting that job so what you need to do for that you need to build a clean single page resume highlight your skills and projects not your cgpa uh, you can use platforms like linkedin where you can reach out to engineers that message them directly or uh, you can apply uh, click on apply button you can use various portals like semicon jobs vlsi jobs.com uh, you can directly visit to the career pages of the website uh, websites of uh, multiple companies like amd qualcom intel uh, here is a pro tip you can create a short video resume or a github project walk through it can make you understand uh, it you, it can make you stand out from other 100 applicants so in the end i would like to say breaking into the vlsi industry is possible with effort build your basics network more and keep learning don't wait to feel ready so if you like this video please like share and subscribe comment your background uh, and if you have any doubts regarding vlsi you can always ask me in comments uh, thanks a lot for watching